Welcome back to Morning Express. And uh, well, today being Tuesday, we look at your money and focus on some of the things that we think are important for you to ensure that you endeavor and prosper in your career and, and you know, making your ends meet. This ends that never seem to meet. Now, this morning, joining us is Salomon Derito, who is the HR Director for Unilever East Africa. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, this morning, Salomon, taking time to be with us this morning. Welcome. Okay. And, uh, well, as you can see, we've got quite a number of awards here, which you Unilever scooped top employer of the year. And let's start, first of all, Salome, by just understanding what is top employer. What does that mean? Does that mean Unilever pays the most? <laughs> or what does it mean when you're top employer? <laughs> Not necessarily. So the top employer is an award by the Top Employer Institute. Mm -hmm. And this is a, um, a recognized body uh, globally that has been recognizing top employers uh, since the 1991. Mm -hmm. Um, so the top employer certification is awarded to the uh, organization that has achieved um, uh, excellence in employee uh, employment conditions. Mm -hmm. It's also awarded to organization that nurtures and develops talent throughout all the levels of the organization mm -hmm. and also to organization that continuously strive to optimize their employment practices. Okay. And precisely that's what uh, Unilever has been able to do. Okay. So it's quite a rigorous um, um, evaluation mm -hmm. that uh, um, assesses human resource uh, practices across nine areas of human resources. Mm -hmm. You know, when you talk about, uh, do you have a talent strategy, strategy in place? Mm -hmm. How do you onboard your employees? Um, how do you go about succession and, and career uh, planning? Mm -hmm. um, leadership development, mm -hmm. learning and development, mm -hmm. culture, uh, compensation and benefits. Okay. Um, and it assesses this organization against these parameters based on global standards. All right. Yeah. Now, this is the fourth time that yes. Unilever is scooping this award. Mm -hmm. What's the secret? I think the secret to our success is uh, our commitment to the people and the talent agenda. So as an organization, the leadership has taken um, um, proactive an initiative, an initiative mm -hmm to create an environment where employees can feel valued. Mm -hmm. It has also created an environment where employees can be innovative mm -hmm. and you know, use the uh, ideas, allow the ideas to germinate and also make a contribution to the organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, maybe for the benefit of somebody who's looking for a job or mm -hmm. looking to advance their career, mm -hmm. what are some of, how do you manage the expectations? Because one of the things you'll realize is that at the point where you're beginning to uh, look for a job and you get mm -hmm. a job, mm -hmm. expectations are normally very, let me say they're manageable. Mm -hmm. they're not low, but they're manageable. Mm -hmm. But as you go up the ladder, the, mm -hmm. the expectations increase. How do you manage that? I think what we do at Unilever is that, uh, you know, once you're an employee, we have uh, a structured um, career development for the employees. And this is owned jointly by the employee. So you take charge of, of your career as an employee. Mm -hmm. And as an organization, we create an environment where you can be the best that you can be. So we have, you know, you create uh, what we call an individual development plan where you work towards how do you develop within the organization. Mm -hmm. um, and we give you the opportunities that you're seeking provided obviously uh, you perform and you meet the expectations of the organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you ever find staff who come in and possibly their expectations were very high, but mm -hmm. over time they realize that they cannot meet those expectations, maybe within an organization? Yeah, we do. We do find that. Uh, and, and what we've done in Unilever, so the, the advantage of being a multinational organization is obviously that the opportunities we have uh, in Unilever are not limited to Kenya. Mm -hmm. Um, so if there are bigger opportunities within other markets in Unilever, mm -hmm. uh, as part of the uh, career development, we give employees opportunity to get uh, those opportunities and exposure. Okay. Um, however, it comes at times when uh, you know, um, <coughs> uh, the opportunities may not be there or the expectations have not been met, mm -hmm. and it's okay for somebody to go. But what we have done very well, because I think of our strong employer brand, mm -hmm. is that we find that we are able to get people who have left us to come back and join us. Okay, I'm yeah. um, sure that happens quite a lot. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, now in terms of now, you know, educating, uh, I was about to say electorate, I'm so used to politicians, but uh -huh. not the electorate, those who are looking for jobs yeah. um, and looking at career development. Mm -hmm. um, what is best practice? What should one look out for? I think some of the, uh, what one should look out for is really to uh, be very clear about uh, their aspirations and to be very clear about how they want to progress within the organization. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the best practices for us is really um, how our approach to leadership development. Mm -hmm. 
And one of the programs that we have at Unilever is a, a program we call the Unilever Future Leaders Program, mm -hmm. where we develop tomorrow's uh, leaders today. Mm -hmm. um, and in this program, what we do is that we attract fresh graduates straight from the university with no experience, and we put them on an accelerated de development that is holistic and that develops them, you know, by giving them stretch assignment, uh, giving them exposure to best practice, um, you know, giving them uh, exposure to grow as leaders and connecting them with mentors and, and coaches. Um, and, you know, within three years, they are ready to take on leadership positions. Okay. Yeah. Now, one of the complaints that you'll hear from many, especially like you've mentioned, those mm -hmm. who are leaving school, mm -hmm. is the word experience. Most mm -hmm. companies are looking for people with number of year of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, how, what would your advice to them be when you've just left university or mm -hmm. maybe training, mm -hmm. and you have, uh, as it was, zero work experience? Yeah. So, uh, um, the, my advice to them would be uh, to be open-minded. Um, to take on opportunities, particularly internship opportunities. Mm -hmm. At Unilever, obviously, in our Future Leaders program, we don't look for experience. Uh, we are only looking for people who have the potential and who are hungry to learn. And, you know, we are able to bring them. We also take on about uh, 40 uh, interns, you know, in, in a year. So I would encourage them to take opportunities of the internship programs that are available mm -hmm. uh, within the market. I would also encourage them to really uh, be open-minded, uh, be hungry to learn, and, and yeah, and uh, they can also volunteer, um, you know, in some of the organisation where you know, um, they can be able to volunteer and is, gain is, is that something? Is that uh, an area that you, as HR, would look at when somebody has volunteered to come under experience? Because there are some who feel or think that experience mm -hmm. is purely uh, from the day you're employed to the number of years you've worked. So currently we don't, uh, you know, we don't, uh, we pay people for their work. Mm -hmm. So even when we take interns, they are learning, yes, they are gaining experience, but we still pay them. So we don't, we don't do volunteer where we don't no, pay But them. for organizations mm -hmm. that uh, possibly would take uh, volunteers and maybe not even pay them, maybe they just yeah. give them bus fare or whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, an allowance, mm -hmm. would you as HR now, from an HR perspective, consider that as experience? If they came and told you I volunteered in, for three years in a certain yes, place? Yes, absolutely. You absolutely, do. we would consider that experience because mm -hmm. what they need to be able to demonstrate is that they have the, the skills and the experience to be able to do the job that you're recruiting for. Okay. Yeah. Now let's talk about talent mm -hmm. and how you go about looking for talent. Mm -hmm. Because, and the reason I, 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 I'm looking at it from that perspective mm -hmm. is because you have many people out there who sit back and think that unless I put in a curriculum vitae somewhere mm -hmm. and they pick me, then I have no chance of getting a job. Mm -hmm. How do you go about looking for talent? I think we, we have a multi uh, faceted approach towards mm -hmm. uh, how we look for talent. Um, we advertise positions when they become available. Uh, we also advert we use a lot of online application now, so we advertise on our, on our link. Mm -hmm. We also have a program that we call the Employee Referral Scheme, where employees can refer uh, people that they know who are qualified to do the job that we have at hand. Um, and obviously, we also do a lot of uh, campus recruitment, so where we do career fairs within the universities, talk to university students about the opportunities that we have within the organization. Um, you know, and if they, are, they feel that uh, we are the employer that they want to work for, they are free to apply. They are free to apply. Yeah. All right. Another area that I know has many people challenged, mm -hmm. uh, and now I'd like to hear from you uh, from the HR perspective, mm -hmm. is job negotiation. There are mm -hmm. times you have a job and here you are, you sit before a panel mm -hmm. and they ask you to negotiate for a job. Mm -hmm. It may be negotiating the terms, it could also be negotiating the, pa the package. Mm -hmm. How does one go about that? So I think it's important for, you, for an individual to know their market value mm -hmm. um, and to know what they are also bringing on the table, the mm -hmm. value that they're bringing to the organization. Obviously, most organizations will have what we call um, scales, standard scales for the jobs that they are recruiting, where they have assigned a value to the job that they are recruiting. So I think it depends on what the individual is looking for. Uh, but in my view, it would be, yes, you can negotiate uh, based on what you think the value you're bringing to the table, what the value of the job you're doing is in the market. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, we look at it from a more holistic approach. 
So it's not just about the money, it's not just about the pack, it's important, yes, but it's also about um, what we call the total employer value proposition. Mm -hmm. And it talks about uh, career development, it talks about advancement, it talks about the culture that you're joining the organization into. Uh, it, so it's, it's holistic, it's not just about the, um, the pay. It's not just about how much you earn at the <laughs> yes. end of the day. Yes. But what should people look out for? Because majority of us are trained to look at mm -hmm. the bottom line. How mm -hmm. much am I getting at the end of the month? Whereas we may not look at things like maybe opportunities, mm -hmm. training and all that. Mm -hmm. What would your advice be? I think it's also, uh, most organizations also have what we call performance, uh, pay for performance, which is about whether it's variable pay, which, which is about bonus. And as an individual, if you're contributing, then you have a significant opportunity to earn much more. Um, so, you know, it's also about um, um, what are the programs that are available and how can you, based on what you put on, you bring to the table, uh, you can be able to earn. Are those uh, something you can tell before you actually on the job? Yes. Because sometimes you just have the job description yeah. and what is required of you once you get the job, but sometimes you may not know what are the training. No, so, so absolutely, when you are, you are discussing about uh, an offer, um, you know, you need to look at uh, the total, what we call the total uh, remuneration. Um, and the terms that comes with the offer, mm -hmm. you know, things, and, and the, there should be full disclosure about uh, what, the, what the role entails and what the terms in the package that comes with the role. Okay. Yeah. How does one go about uh, negotiating their salary? Sometimes you'll find you go for mm -hmm. an interview mm -hmm. and they ask you how much do you expect? Mm -hmm. And I, many get stuck wondering, do I overquote? Do I, you know, exaggerate? Mm -hmm. Hoping that if we negotiate, as Kenyans, of course, we're used to negotiating. You go to the market and they give you a price, but you negotiate. But how do you negotiate your salary? I think the starting point is uh, what you're currently earning, but also the value. Do your market research first to understand what is the value of the role that you're coming into. So that should give you a guide on how much uh, the, the role is paid in the market. Mm -hmm. It's also about where you're coming, you know, where you're coming from. And what I've seen, if it's a lateral move, you know, it's, it's not a, you're not moving to a higher position, is that uh, 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 people will put a 30, 40% markup. Yeah, but it's about understanding the value of the role, of the role that you're going into. Do your research, mm -hmm. uh, find out what the market pays for that role, mm -hmm. and then you have a base of being able to talk about, discuss, and negotiate the salary. Do you ever have instances where people possibly have put too much and you end up literally just cancelling that uh, um, application based on that amount? No, so we don't, uh, we don't necessarily cancel the, the application based on the amount. We will have a negotiation because obviously as much as you have an aspiration as a prospective employee, mm -hmm. the company also has salary scales and bands that, uh, you know, set how we reward people. And it's about, um, you know, we will tell you um, this is the going rate for the job that you're coming to do. And as an individual, you make a decision on whether you will take the job at the, at, at the package that is being offered. Okay. Yeah. So what would you say has uh, helped Unilever stay at the top in terms of now, you know, earning and getting these awards four times in a row? as the best employer? Yeah, I think it's uh, what has made us um, uh, stay four times in a row. It's our commitment to the talent and the people agenda. It's also that we continuously uh, you know, create an environment where employees can make a contribution to the organization. Obviously, as a multinational, we benefit from the fact that uh, we can um, exchange ideas and learning with other um, companies within Unilever, and we use this to benchmark ourselves. So in Unilever, we say here in Kenya, we say we, there's only one standard, which is a global standard. So we benchmark ourselves against global standards. Mm -hmm. And I think what we also do is that we use this um, evaluation, not just to get the awards, but um, as a tool that helps us to continuously improve on our policies and practices. Okay, yeah. and your thoughts maybe and your comments mm -hmm. on uh, an attitude which I would say many employees have, that mm -hmm. they, uh, they, they give out as much as, you know, they, they, or rather they are paid for what they give out. Mm -hmm. uh, from an HR director's perspective, what is it that you look out for when you want somebody to go up the ladder? What are the, some of the telltale things that you look at mm -hmm. as an employee and think this is somebody who deserves to go up? I think what we look at is uh, we, we have an assessment tool that we call the assessment of potential. Um, and here you're looking at uh, an individual who is capable of taking on uh, bigger responsibilities. So it's about uh, going over and above the call of the duty. You know, and it's somebody who is really hungry and who, you know, want to be, um, you know, want to take on challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and we have opportunities where you can, you know, um, be in a project role. So it's really about, um, employees who demonstrate that they perform in their role 
and accept, you know, consistently uh, perform in their role to a high standard and people who demonstrate that they have the capacity to take on bigger responsibilities within the organization. Okay. Yeah. And, for and we also look at not just the performance, we also look at what we call competencies. Um, and you know, this is about how does the individual work with people, how do they develop people that work with them, um, how do they um, you know, um, achieve their results. So it's really a holistic assessment of looking at continuous um, uh, high standards of, of performance, mm -hmm. but also capability to do um, um, and, and willingness to do bigger roles. Okay. Yeah. Now, another area that uh, I've had many employers complain about is the employment of millennials. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, their culture, their way of doing things is mm -hmm. completely different as compared to the traditional way of doing things. Mm -hmm. How have you overcome that? I think what we have done is really embracing the millennials because we must uh, accept that their ways of doing uh, things is different. What we have done at Unilever is to really create a workplace and an environment that uh, takes care of everyone within the organization. So what you'll find in our offices is a very relaxed environment. Uh, you know, we don't have a formal dress code per se. So, you know, uh, people- Is that part of the company culture? It's part of the company culture. You can come in your jeans as long as whatever, however you feel comfortable to work. Uh, we have also created an environment where, you know, they can collaborate with teams and be able to work and produce results. And we appreciate that, uh, you know, they may have music, they are multitasking, but they, they still work. And I think for us, it's really being very clear on what we expect from them. And as long as they're achieving, you know, how they go about achieving uh, what we expect of them, mm -hmm. we, we, are, we are relaxed about okay, that. Okay, now, given, given that we are, we are in a global setup, and you've talked mm -hmm. about your benchmark being mm -hmm. global, mm -hmm. how do you assess results? Because results are not necessarily, you know, traditionally, mm -hmm. you needed to be in the office at a certain time, do a certain amount of work, mm -hmm. and leave at five mm -hmm. for you to be seen to be effective. Mm -hmm. That is not the case anymore because mm -hmm. you could deliver from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Is that something that maybe you're willing to embrace as, we as have, a company? We have, actually, happening? one of the reasons why we have gotten the Top Employer Award is because we, we are leading in this market in that, uh, in that aspect. So what we do, we say that it's the impact that counts and it's the results that, that counts, not the time and attendance. So what we have is that we have an, a flexible policy in place where employees can work from home if they choose to work from home, where employees can choose uh, the flexible work hours in terms of when they come to the office and when they leave the office. As long as we have defined the parameters and the achievement expectations, um, you know, people, we, we trust people that they will be able to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And what we measure is the output rather than the many ha has hours. Has that worked? That we because put. you'll find others will obviously take advantage of that and do their, any other business and still possibly try and deliver the last minute. It has worked, um, and obviously, when you work with your with your with your line manager, the expectation is that you'll be able to perform and, and let them know uh, at 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 what where you are at any one point. Uh, you can't necessarily rule out that uh, people don't do things that they, you know, personal things. But at the bottom of it, it's are they delivering what is expected of them? Are they achieving high standards of performance? And if that is achieved. Uh, we are okay with it because, I mean, maybe I can ask you, um, if somebody is sitting on their desk from 8 to 5, how do you know they are not serving the internet half of the time? Or on Facebook. Or, or on WhatsApp Facebook or, 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 or on WhatsApp. Mm. WhatsApp. So it's about uh, the performance and it's about the delivery. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, what are some of the challenges you possibly have gone through as an organization in terms of looking for talent? I think one of the key things, obviously, for us is uh, being a top employer, other organizations are looking in you know, to get your best talent. So obviously one of the key challenges that we face as an organization is talent retention. So when you develop these people um, and people know that you're a top employer, so they are looking in. So retention of talent is a challenge. Um, and how we overcome that is uh, providing a compelling um, career proposition to our employees doesn't mean they will not leave. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other challenge obviously is the is attracting and finding female engineers. Um, we are very passionate about the diversity agenda as an organization. And what we have been able to drive is that 50% of our middle level management is actually female. Um, so finding female uh, engineers and attracting them has been a challenge. And what we have done is that we have partnered with the Women's, which is an a body that uh, nurtures and encourages 
uh, female engineers to take up careers in engineering. Okay. Yeah. And uh, for the benefit of somebody who maybe feels, from mm -hmm. an HR perspective, uh, they've uh, reached the end in a certain organization, how do you know it's time to possibly venture out instead of now going up the ladder within mm -hmm. the organization? Yeah. So I think as an individual, you need to be very clear about uh, how you want to progress within the organization. Um, and, uh, you know, as you progress within the organization, you need to look at what are the available opportunities as you go up the ladder. And if you feel that uh, whatever is available, you've reached where you don't have, you know, uh, the, the role that you can grow into, uh, then you may think about uh, considering options elsewhere. But like I said in Unilever, I think the beauty about us is that being a global organization, we are able to give opportunities to our talent as long as they are, you know, they are delivering consistently mm -hmm. uh, opportunities outside this market if they are flexible. But what we have also done to accommodate female employees who are not mobile is we have regional jobs that are based in Kenya that people can be able to do based out of here if they're not mobile. Okay. Another area maybe one would want to focus on is conflict. Mm -hmm. How does one handle where you have your line manager or your immediate supervisor, you mm -hmm. feel possibly, whether it's because of a personality clash, uh, you're not able to get along, and as a result, your uh, upward movement is uh, hindered or curtailed. How does one deal with that? So I think um, mm -hmm. how one deals with that is uh, obviously the, the organization need to have mechanism that, en that ensures that uh, decisions are taken fairly uh, for all employees and that the fact that you have differences, yes, we can differ on opinions, but we shouldn't differ as individuals. The fact that you have differences doesn't necessarily mean that uh, your career should stagnate. Uh, and we, you need to use the mechanism that is available within the organization. We have the HR function uh, that will, will step in where you know, that, that happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do you, what? Give me. Do you, have you had examples where possibly you've had two uh, employees conflict, and as a result, uh, HR has to step in and resolve? Yes, we have. We have, um, and uh, you know, this will be one example is where an employee does not agree on the performance rating, for instance, on the performance assessment that the line manager has given them, mm -hmm. and they tend to think maybe it's because of. Uh, other reasons other than the performance reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and where we have stepped in is really being very clear that the, uh, the performance expectations were very clear up front. Mm -hmm. And you can then access based on, you know, based on facts mm -hmm. rather than uh, emotions. All right. Yeah. Um, as we get closer to the conclusion, how does one negotiate benefits? Because you can have your basic salary, which, mm -hmm. uh, you know, has, has been put down and is clear. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you need to negotiate the benefits or the package that comes with it. How does mm -hmm. one go about that? So we, we, we have, what we have for us is a standard benefits for all employees. Um, so, um, you know, we don't have individual benefits uh, for different people because obviously it creates um, um, an inconsistent and but what- But you may have different benefits mm -hmm. depending on your work level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th those will be standard for the work level that you are in. So, so long as you're in that work so level, So if you're this is what, in that work level, then you get negotiable. that benefit, yeah. But do you have institutions, or organizations mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. possibly one needs to negotiate or needs to be aware of them? Because mm -hmm. I found institutions where mm -hmm. they may not be very quick to tell you that there are these benefits available. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, um, for you to be a member of a club, mm -hmm. sometimes the organization can actually pay for you, mm -hmm. but they don't volunteer that information. Mm -hmm. Is that something maybe you should be upfront to ask? Um, you, you could. Uh, so for us, we are very transparent in terms of how we reward our people. So you know, you know what benefits come with the, with the role that you're doing, and we have full disclosure on those ones. Mm. And yes, we do have, you know, whether it's club membership, uh, we have all those benefits. So you, you will know we, ha we have full disclosure. But you could negotiate based on your personal circumstances. For instance, you may have a company that is offering a company car, and you say, uh, rather than a company car, I would rather have cash in my pocket mm -hmm. and I can be able to, um, you know, get myself a car. And I've seen organizations that are open to that. We would be open to that. We have had people tell us, rather than give me a, uh, you know, a vehicle, the two, I would rather you give me a cash equivalent and I can be able to, um, you know, manage my, 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 my my finances. That okay. Mm -hmm. I know your organization is global, but mm -hmm. now on a local level, mm -hmm. uh, how would you look at our education system in terms of preparing 
people for the job market. Mm. Um, I've had people say that we have crammers, especially with the 844 system. Mm -hmm. You have people who cram, but now when you put them in a job situation, they're not mm. able to articulate what they have learned mm -hmm. into practice. Yeah, so we have had that uh, challenge uh, as an organization, you know, when we go out to recruit, whether it's uh, fresh graduates. Um, so what we are doing is to actively work with the universities so that we give uh, students an opportunity to intern and to be able to transfer what they have learned in college mm -hmm. into a real work environment. Mm -hmm. We also have a signature program that we call the Idea Trophy Challenge. And what the Idea Trophy Challenge does is that every year we go out to, we open it out to university students where we encourage them to come up with creative ideas around a brand. Uh, we connect them with mentors within Unilever. Uh, we give them the tools that they need to be able to start applying what they have learned in classroom mm -hmm. in a work environment. Maybe your comments and thoughts of our education system, does it prepare us for the job market or do you think there needs to be a change somewhere? I think the, we, the, the, there's need to be a change. Um, you know, we need to really look at um, things have changed, you know, over the last, whether it's 20 years or 30 years, uh, and the work environment has also changed. So we need to work closely as organization with the universities mm -hmm. to help develop the curriculum to ensure that the, what is being taught in, in school is relevant for today, and it prepares uh, graduates for the world of work today. All right, and yeah. uh, as we close, uh, maybe final comments and your mm -hmm. advice to people out there who are looking for a job. What is it that they need to prepare? What is it that they need to get ready mm -hmm. uh, so that as you walk into that interview room, mm -hmm. uh, you're not ill-prepared? Maybe from your experience as an HR director, you obviously mm -hmm. come across so many people who are looking for jobs and possibly lose that opportunity right at the white go because they were just not prepared, not because they're not qualified. Mm. I think one of the things is that, you know, if you're going for, a, for, a, for an interview, you need to, to first of all research on the organization that you're going for an interview. You know, some of the questions that the, uh, the, the, the recruiter may ask you is about the organization. So you need to understand the organization that you are uh, going into. You need to understand the role that you are recruiting for, you know, that you, are, you have applied for. And you need to prepare for the interview. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've, you've had people who've literally failed just because they did not prepare well, but not because their papers don't qualify them. Yeah, not because, because what we are looking at in an interview is somebody to be able to demonstrate the skills that they have on the paper. Mm -hmm. And if they can't articulate it very well because they haven't demonstrated that skill, then obviously uh, they will miss that opportunity. On the CV, what is it that you look out for? I know you receive like thousands and thousands, but you must yeah. uh, have a way of sifting and yeah. remaining maybe with the top, I don't know how many, but how, what is it that you look out for? So we we'll look out for um, obviously the minimum expectations of the role. We'll look out for key achievements, so highlighting what you have done. The impact that you have had in a role is important. So it's not just about listing what the role, has, what the role is about, but it's also listing what impact you had in the role that you have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so does, do things like format matter, how it is placed, you know, presentation? Yes, it does. Obviously, I mean, when you look at, uh, depending on how the, the presentation is, you mm -hmm. know, it can put you off as a, as a recruiter if you're looking through a thousand of CVs. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the layout of the presentation also to be in a way that makes it easy for the uh, recruiter to be able to get the information they need to get out of the CV. All right. Thank you very much, Salome Derito, HR yeah. Director, Unilever East Africa, for joining us this morning. And congratulations. I see Unilever is doing a great job uh, in you. terms of employment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, yeah. that's where we're going to wind up Morning Express this morning. Thank you very much for staying with us, but do stay with us and continue right here on KTN News. We've got Worldview coming up with Yvonne Okwara, so don't you go away. Have a good day. God bless.